This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Events. And uh, tell you what, the Waco Community Band, a very important part of this community, celebrating 43 years. That's right. I understand this year. And uh, Dr. John Conrad, who is the conductor of the Waco Community Band, and uh, it's celebrating 43. We're celebrating with you as well. Just got that doctor. <laughs> Out of the way, it's behind me now. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So it's a doctor of music education, musical that, arts, mu- musical arts. And um, how long? How long a process have you been working? Uh, a few years. I took I took the long route. It's it's normally a three year degree, so I went a little little extra. <laughs> but and your day job is at MCC. Correct? Yes, correct. I'm the director of bands at MCC, and I'm also the coordinator of the music department. Finished my first year doing that, and so uh, those are kind of my two big responsibilities there. Man, they keep keep putting it on you. Yeah, piling but, up. But <laughs> but the community band has been yours for a few years now, right? How yeah, many years? I just uh, we're about to finish my eighth year there. Is it eight years? Eight years already. I was going to guess four. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we had a chance yeah. to talk, but um, what a great group of musicians. I mean, it truly is a community band. You it don't is. have any paid musicians, right? No paid musicians. It's uh, everyone from, um, you know, someone who lives down the street to uh, who's retired to active professionals, I- any field, any, as long as they can play and, and, and play well, we, we want them in our ensemble. Well, you've had a great season and you're wrapping up the season on June 11th. Right. And uh, what really caught my eye is it's sort of geared toward young people. And, you know, my passion for music and kids with the Waco Symphony right. and the children's uh, concert series, anything that's going to co- kind of focus on young people, I'm, I'm all about. So let's talk about that concert. It's coming up on the 11th at 730 mm-hmm. at, there at MCC, M- MCC at the Wilbur A. Ball Performing Arts. Great venue, easy to get to. Mm-hmm. Um but you've got really a fun program. Yeah, you know we're we're trying this for the first time since I've been here. It may not be the first time we've ever done this in, in title. I, I don't remember. But, uh, you know before. we're looking for ways to 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 bring in new audiences all the time, and and uh, you know I thought well, why haven't we done this? So you know it, there's music. Not, none of it. It's not all of it is, is you know Disney kind of themed. It's 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 there's a little of that. There's some there there is that, and then there's also things that are more from the classical realm, like um, like Ravel's Bolero. We're doing an arrangement of that, mm-hmm. and where they're going to hear every instrument play the same solo, so they get to hear it numerous oh, times. Man, so it's a I, catchy tune. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, a little tour and it's of the kind instruments. Of the same little refrain Ex- that's played exactly, over and right. over and so over again. Right. So they'll get to hear all the instruments play it, and then yeah. and then there's things that are more metallic, like the first piece by John Mackey, Foundry, uh, written a little over ten years ago has bowls, kitchen bowls and, and piles of metal and, and, you know, just different sound chains and things like that and whips in the back. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, How bright sounds, metallic. That? Yeah. Very flashy. So there are things like that. And cowbell, then right? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> there, more, there's definitely more, cowbell in there. Yeah. A little more cowbell, baby. <laughs> yeah. And there's a little, just a lot of, a lot of di- variety things that are going to, going to appeal to children. And, and, and like we've been saying, children at heart as well. So it's not no, just absolutely. for children. So everybody, it'll, it'll appeal to everyone, but especially children. Well, and what a great excuse to bring the kids and grandkids mm-hmm. and expose them to to music. What I love about the children's symphony series is to stand up there as narrator and see these kids for the first time they hear maybe a fanfare or something from live musicians. They literally jump. Yeah. I mean, it's just so awesome. Do you remember the first time you heard a live band or live <laughs> orchestra? Or is uh, it, did you grow I, up? I, I, I don't, you know, I... I think I started going to those after my exposure in, in middle school first time. Yeah. So the first time I really got to go to a symphony was probably after that. It was for me, it was the musicals growing up. So yeah. I remember going into staring down into the music pit and seeing the the pit musicians down there and the conductor. And I was had good seats so I could be right there and behind the conductor conducting them. So it was I think that was maybe my first experience. Well, this one that's coming up uh on on the eleventh, 
is uh, is there a ticket charge? No, it's free. So it's it's a perfect perfect venue, perfect time to bring someone who you know may may not be able to sit completely still for the whole time. We are not worried <laughs> about you know if you feel like applauding, applaud. It doesn't don't feel like you you know it's not stuffy. You don't have to feel like right, you're. Yeah. <laughs> am, am I doing this out at the right time or not? No, oh, come on in, no. have fun, enjoy yourself, and and bring your family. Well, you mentioned some of the things you've got. Uh, John Philip Sousa. Of course, when I think of a, a band, <laughs> you know, I think of maybe a Sousa. And Sousa wrote something called the Mother Hubbard March. He did. We're we're performing that. It's uh it's it's based off of various nursery rhymes in two and a half minutes. So uh, oh, wow. you'll hear you know some familiar catchy tunes in there that that John Philip Sousa put into a march in March form in his traditional form. And uh, so it's got signatures of Sousa, but it's got some fairy tale kind of vibes in there. Well, and you've got some John Williams. So so uh, how how different is the uh, orchestration? For a band as opposed to symphonic. Well, of course, we're right. lacking the string section, which plays a, a right. real dominant role in the orchestra. Uh -huh. So it, it has to be reorchestrated into diff various instruments throughout the throughout the bands. We have saxophones, they don't. We have euphoniums, they don't. We have a larger per sec percussion section, they tend not to. So uh, we, we find way, you know cr crafty ways to put that in there, and it sounds really good. We're playing his throne room scene, uh, the music from the throne room scene. Yes. Um, in the finale, the end credits. So that's that's uh, the little sneak peek of what we're going to. Be doing John Williams. So. <clears throat> well, it's it's going to be an awesome concert. It really is going to be a lot of fun for everybody. And and about how many how many seats will that auditorium? Hold? We we have room for three hundred and fifty. Okay. So. Yeah, but plan to get there. Maybe yeah, early. It's there. first if come would, seating. Yeah, if, to get preferred parking, you should probably get there about 20, 30 minutes early, and and make sure that that way you get seated, you get a program, read through it, and and be ready for the music. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the band itself. Uh, I know you've got people who've been playing in it for years mm -hmm. and years and years. Uh, maybe somebody out there is like, you know, I haven't I haven't played my clarinet in a while, but you know, I'd like to maybe brush up on it. Yeah, is there an audition process for your next season? How there does that is. Work? Yeah, we have an audition process. Uh, everyone in there has auditioned at some point to get in, and then they can go to WacoCommunityBand.org, and it explains how to how to do that. Um, the audition repertoire. There's people. To to contact if you are from a certain section you want to contact the section leader for that ensemble and then they'll arrange it and, and oftentimes i'll sit in on that as well uh people with music degrees uh sometimes uh don't have to audition uh, mm -hmm. because because they've been trained already and we're, we're, we don't have to worry about that as much but um yes there's not there's a process formal process it, unfortunately we just we're so big that we we're not at a level now anymore any longer where you can just come in sit down and open up your case we need to a little bit more selective, which is good. The caliber of the ensemble has has, has gone up because of that too. So. so, how many members in your group? This concert, we have almost seventy for this wow. concert. Uh, typically, we were around six fifty five to sixty members. Um, so we're a little larger this um, this concert set. Um, and uh, you know, we're not looking just to to pad the sections. It's everyone who's right. in there deserves to be there, and, and it's it's a great sounding group because of that. So we're just a little bigger and a little louder. So yeah. <laughs> Man, that, well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really so happy to hear how well things are going. Um, how often do you rehearse? And, and this is the finale of your season. Well, not really, because <laughs> July 4th, right. you always There's an asterisk there. Always play the July 4th fireworks. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that while we sure. have a minute. Sure. Yeah, we rehearse once a week, Tuesday nights, uh, in the uh, on the MCC campus, and then we will. Uh, it's just ninety minutes a week. That's it, ninety minutes, and we we uh, we're working hard. There's not a lot of time for. There's time before and after for for, for conversation and fellowship. <laughs> yeah, right, but right. Um, we're we're we buckle down and go a hundred miles an hour during rehearsal. Then, uh, the, this will, like you said, be our finale for the season for our 43rd season. And then, uh, we will, and I said, there's an asterisk. We will play at the 4th of July, a touchdown alley on Baylor's campus. Like we do during the fireworks after all the main stage events go on. Yeah. And you've been doing that for ever <laughs> quite some time before it moved yeah. over there. I, yeah. while I've been here, it's always been there, but before I got here, I understand it was downtown and oh yeah, uh, more, the community yeah. band was always there to play patriotic music. And mm -hmm. so, so you've always kind of got those things in your hip pocket are, are always rehearsed and ready to go with the, you know, several other John Philip Sousa marches, I'm sure. Right. Plenty of, yep. Washington <laughs> post and stars and stripes and all, all the classics. All, all the ones you, all the ones you expect. Exactly. Um, so let's look ahead to next season. Have you already started planning your um, planning for next year? A little year? bit. We're um, <clears throat> we're we're still still putting all the puzzle pieces in. Uh, we're got some ideas, some framework, but nothing uh -huh. nothing really you know 
nothing specific yet. Now you normally perform there uh, on on the MCC mm-hmm. campus at the Wilbright Ball Performing Arts Center, but do you ever kind of branch out and go to other venues? Yeah, occasionally we do. <clears throat> um, the hardest part is we only have five or six rehearsals. So if we add in a, in a Tuesday in there, then we're short by one rehearsal. But sometimes we'll travel. We have in the past out to uh, Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook Baptist Church. We've been to um, uh, the church off of uh, the Methodist, United Methodist off of... Um, First United Methodist uh, off of, uh, Cobbs, yeah. yep, on Cobbs. Right, yeah, I know, I know that y'all have done. So we do get out there. occasionally. We we like getting out. Um, it just it's a, it's always a matter of logistics and trying to find what's available and and what what suits the needs of of them and us as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's exciting. I mean, it's it's wonderful to see how well things are going with the White Coat Community you. Band. Um, your your vision for the future. I mean, how, what do you what do you see in the coming years? Oh, an even larger group, well, maybe yeah. a spinoff group. Or? Yeah, well, ho- hopefully a, a more refined group. Uh, you know, we, we're never we're never satisfied. We we love what we do. And we sound wonderful, but there's we're musicians and we're artists, and we're always trying to find ways to 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 make our craft just that much better. So. Of course, every time that's our goal, and um, who knows, maybe a large group, maybe guest artists, guest soloists, guest conductors. There's there's always new ways to to put some flair on the program. Well, this is it's going to be it's going to be a great concert, and and uh, again, this is June 11th. No charge. No charge. At uh, MCC at the uh, Wilbur Eight Ball. We just performance. we want people to play for. <laughs> hey, oh, exactly. Yeah, you want an audience, but especially the youngsters. Um, getting, getting those kiddos there, they'll thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, music is, is kind of a universal language. It is. It really is. So, but I like to end these little visits with a a little questionnaire similar to the one that late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the Actor's Studio. So I'm going to ask you, John, what is your favorite word? Ooh. Favorite word. Wow. Um. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, maybe some, maybe it's more of a compliment that I uh, the greatest compliment I could receive would be bravo, I guess. So yeah, we'll go with that. Go. Music related. We'll that's go with bravo. A good, that's a good word. What about your least favorite word? <laughs> one that I'm used used all too often. Like or um. I guess that's two <laughs> words, but Okay, good. Uh, what turns you on creatively? spiritually or emotionally? I think seeing my peers uh, succeed, a lot of my um, music colleagues, when, when they are kind of, it, it's it's almost a competitive kind of, you know, oh, I saw them do that. I, uh, it inspires me to want to get better. So, um, yeah, any, anything that, that when my colleagues succeed, I really like to, that's what inspires me. Mm-hmm. What, what turns you off then creatively? Or spiritually or emotionally? Um, I, I think when uh, I, I try to be collaborative. So so I I I think I think I, I I don't know if it turns me off, but I just I try to find ways to to be collaborative with others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what I love to ask this of musicians: What sound do you love the most? Mm. Well, I'm a little biased. I'm a trumpet player. <laughs> so of course I've got to go with the trumpet, the trumpet sound. But um, you know, there, there's just that I, I'm a wind, I'm a wind band conductor. I, mm-hmm. I prefer to. That's just where I live is in the wind band. So I, of course, I love orchestra and choir and and everything else. But um, I think the, the 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 contemporary modern wind band is is something that I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. Then, what is your least favorite sound? This morning, my daughter, my three-year-old was playing a recorder, so so I might go with that. Maybe not that part of the wind yeah, band, right? But my ten-year-old was also playing the recorder, and in, in that, so it's not the recorder; it's just maybe the person. Playing. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, what other profession would you like to have tried, or maybe still may want to try? I. Coming from Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma, they have the National Weather Service there. Oh, yeah. And it's based out of Norman, Oklahoma. And anytime we get storms around here, I'm staring up at the sky. So my ah. wife always says I I should have been a, a, a weather chaser or a meteorologist. So mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe that. Or photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then what 
What profession do you know you would not want to do? No, thanks. <laughs> I'll stay away. Uh, I, I, I think anything behind a desk, I would not be very good at yeah. because I, I like to be active. And, and so being anchored to that would probably not be so, not be the best for best job for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then one last question. Oh, what do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> uh, I, hopefully, hopefully I, I've, I've left a positive mark in the music world, something along those lines. I, you know, I, I try to try to develop our profession and our craft and share it with others. So hopefully, hopefully that, that I've succeeded in that. <laughs> not that, not that he would say, you should have asked for more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, John, it's been fun. Thank, it's so good to catch up with yeah. you again. It's been Likewise. a while since we've had a chance to talk. Dr. John Conrad, who is the director of the Waco Community Band, June 11th, mark it down. It's going to be great. That evening at 730. Correct. Take the kids and the grandkids, mm-hmm. neighbor kids, who who all, because it's, um, it's a free concert and it's going to be tailor-made for the young and the young at heart. Thanks, John. Thank Thank you you so much. Thank you for being with us for Central Texas Events. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder.